Yo, what's going on you guys? My name is Owen and welcome back to another video. So for today's video, the topic is gonna to be something that was very highly requested by you guys, which is a Q&A about my brand um, and about brands in general. I told you guys yesterday on my Instagram story to send in your questions. If there's anything you want to know about my brand, Colette Hyatt, um, when it comes to like, the manufacturing, the design process, anything regarding that or about brands in general, like if you guys want to start your own brand. So I took in a lot of your questions and I picked out a bunch. I'm gonna to try to include a lot of images while I talk just so it's not so boring. It's not me just looking at a camera for like 20 minutes or however long this video is gonna be. I'll try to run through the questions as quickly as I can. And the second part of the video is gonna be me featuring some of your outfits. And I told you guys to tag me in all of your outfit pictures wearing Colette Hyatt. And I'm gonna go through and talk about my favorites um, talk about how you guys styled them and all that stuff. So it's just gonna be like a sit down discussion type video. So maybe grab a drink, sit down, relax, and let's just get right into it. So hopping right into the first question, we have what was the biggest problem you ran into when releasing collection one? I think probably the hardest part was actually staying on schedule. If you guys have been watching for probably the past year, then you know I've been like teasing and uh, saying release dates and all that stuff. I just keep having to push it back just because um, maybe something goes wrong, there's a delay of some sort. The first time around, which kind of like delayed it by a few months, was after I got the samples in and after I made my notes and sent them off, and then I got the second round of samples in. I really didn't like where it was going. I wanted to find better materials, I wanted to improve the fit a little bit more, change a few dimensions of stuff like that, which put a giant delay in the whole process. Um, by quite a few months. So I think staying on track and making sure you release on time is very important. As you guys know, I released sweaters and sweatshirts and pants in basically the summer, which was not what I originally intended. Next question is, do you have to invest a lot of money to produce a collection like yours? Um, I'd say if you want to produce a collection that's around six items and with like good quality materials, you do have to invest a lot of money just because there are certain minimums that your manufacturer will give you. So obviously you can't order below that amount. The more units you buy, the cost per item goes down, but it still does add up very, very quickly. It depends like where you're manufacturing, um, the kind of materials you're using, and like the kind of silhouettes you're producing. Um, but it does cost a lot of money, especially if you want to do something a little bit more complicated. Basically, the more complicated the item gets and the higher quality the item is, it's just going to cost a lot more. Next question is, did you have any experience with sewing before Colette Hyatt? Um, do you think it's necessary? I actually don't know how to sew. Um, I would like to learn how to sew at some point, but it is not necessary to learn how to sew um, to start a clothing brand. When you think about it, designers nowadays don't really sew anything together. It's all being manufactured and produced. So generally, I don't think it's necessary. A lot of um, fashion schools will have you do sewing classes and that kind of thing. Like at my school, um, the fashion design major is pretty much all sewing. I knew going into it that sewing was not going to be very important if I wanted to start a brand, so I just kind of cut that out and I didn't do a fashion design major. The next question from my friend David, how do you find a manufacturer? There are a lot of different ways to find a manufacturer. Um, I'd say most people probably have a connection to the factory, like a friend of a friend. That's how I found my manufacturer. Um, it's a friend of a friend, so I was able to get connected very easily. Next question is, do you outsource for all your pattern making, seamstresses, etc., or do you do it all by yourself? For the pattern making, for the most part, um, it's kind of like half and half. I do some pattern making by myself, and the other half, um, I'm able to take a piece and then reference the piece. So for the Colette Hyatt hoodies, like the ones with the open neckline, I took a hoodie that I already had, and then we kind of deconstructed it and built a pattern based off that. Because it's a lot cheaper to make a pattern that way, um, it's a lot quicker too. And also you have a better idea about the fit. So if you had a hoodie but you want to change up the material and the fit, you could take the same pattern of the hoodie and then extend the length or make it wider, make the sleeves a little bit longer. If you were looking to start a brand or go into cut and sew clothing, I'd say using reference pieces and then changing up the fit and the material is the best way to go. Don't try to go the original pattern making route. It's gonna be very, very expensive and very time consuming too. Next question is, where did you get inspiration for your brand? Is it from your personal style mainly or something else? I'd say it's mainly from my personal style. Um, obviously, I would want to wear all the items that I produce. I wouldn't make something that I didn't like. A lot of designers, like high-end designers, do make stuff and then they never wear or they don't want to wear. They're just designing for that market. But since it is my brand, I'm able to design stuff that I like and that I would wear. Next question is, if Colette takes off, is it quits for YouTube and then what? Um, definitely not gonna quit YouTube anytime soon. I really like doing YouTube videos because it's kind of like another outlet for me to be creative on and just show parts about my life. Even though Instagram is like tied for my number one platforms to use, 
Um, it doesn't really give a good personal side, I feel like. I like to keep my Instagram very clean, curated. Um, but on YouTube, obviously, I'm, I'm able to be a lot more expressive and kind of tell you guys about behind the scenes stuff a lot easier. So yeah, I'm definitely not gonna quit YouTube at all. I'd say once I graduate from school next year, I'm gonna be showing a lot more behind the scenes about my brand. Um, and designing and all that stuff. It's just kind of hard while I'm at school. So yeah, that's kind of like my future plans. Next question is, how many samples do you go through to make a piece, slash how long does the sampling process take? I wanna say it was like three or four samples. I could be wrong though. The sweater took the most samples by far. Um, I kind of changed up the sweater entirely. Originally it was gonna be a sweater vest with cut off sleeves and like a deep V-neck, um, like distressing all over it. However, I wasn't really liking where it was going, the color was a little off, the material was a little off, um, and I just kind of get tired of the silhouette after a while, so I wanted to make something a lot more wearable, and so I ended up changing it to a higher quality material. I ended up going 100% wool, which is very expensive, um, like a really nice wool too, it's not like an inchy wool. And then um, I also changed up the fit, the color, the jacquard design too, like the um, amount of detail to include on it. So I probably went through like, five or six samples of the sweater. Even though it looks like a really simple piece, it just took a long time to get to that final design. It all depends on the kind of item you're producing, um, how the samples are looking. For the side bag, the vegan leather side bag, that only had one sample before it was finalized. Like I had a sample and I made one tweak and then it was done. Didn't have to change much about that one. So it all just depends. Next question is, how can I start a brand with a low budget? Um, that can be kind of tough, but it's also kind of fun because obviously you're just completely built from the ground up. I'd say try to find a manufacturer that is able to do really low quantities. I'd say anywhere from like 30 to 50 units is a good starting point. In terms of silhouettes, I'd say the best items you can produce uh, to keep your costs low, but also your profits high is t-shirts, hats, and socks. And then try to the best of your ability, sell through as much as you can. I'd say only start with like one item don't go crazy, don't do like multiple SKUs for like a collection or that kind of thing. If you have a low budget, start with one item, maybe it's just a t-shirt, maybe it's just a hat or just socks, and then try to sell through, and then take your, like the amount of money that you made, take all the money and then reinvest it. Do maybe like a t-shirt and a long sleeve, and then sell through and then reinvest. You just gotta keep reinvesting. Almost all the money that I made from the brand, I'm reinvesting back in, just because there's always room for improvement. Um, I wanna do better materials and that kind of thing. So I'd say reinvesting is the best way to start off on a low budget. Try to get really low quantities, but make sure that you don't have any product left over. If you wanna sell out, selling out is like the best thing you can do for your brand. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's move on to the next question. Next question, have you thought about creating shoes in the future of your brand? So with shoes, I'd say 99% of the time you can't produce shoes in the same factory you're producing clothes. For example, the bags in my collection are made in a different factory than the rest of the items just because like I have a bag factory, a hat factory, um, a clothing factory. They're all separate even though they all like work underneath the same umbrella. If I can find a good shoe manufacturer, um, then I definitely want to do that in the future. I'd love to make shoes. But we'll see though, I definitely do want to pursue shoes at some point. Next question is, what are normal minimum order quantities and did you decide to go with minimums for Colette Hyatt? Um, I think the industry standard for minimums, first off it depends on the kind of item you're producing, um, but I'd say like industry standard is like 200 units. Um, there are obviously some factories that can go lower than that. I do know that a lot of factories in the US are able to do um, less than 200 units. And then for Colette Hyatt, I don't really want to disclose how many um, units I produced for my brand just because obviously people are able to do math. I'm gonna leave it ambiguous for now. Next question is, do you think the market is oversaturated with clothing brands? Um, it's tough, there's two sides to it. Um, one side, I think it's really cool that people have clothing brands and they wanna start brands. Um, however, I do think it's kind of meh when people start like these really low quality, um, very low effort t-shirt brands, whether it's take blank t-shirts, screen print on them, and then call it a day and just try to make money. I think you should put a lot more effort behind what you're releasing. Um, that's why I really like Cut and Sew. It involves a lot of creativity, involves a lot more effort and um, a lot more time put behind each item. Whereas when you buy a blank t-shirt, obviously that's all you're doing is you're buying a blank t-shirt that's already made. There's nothing too special about it besides the print. So even though clothing brands are a very saturated thing, everyone in fashion wants to start a clothing brand um, at some point and you know I'd, I'd say put a lot of effort behind it next question is what would you say is the most stressful part about having slash creating slash maintaining a brand i'd say the most stressful thing was probably like 
three or four months before the release. Um, I wasn't really sure if people were actually gonna buy anything. I had never released anything before just by myself. I've like helped out in designs and that kind of thing before, but never released something solely by myself. I wasn't sure if the brand is gonna be a complete flop. Um, luckily it wasn't, luckily people actually bought stuff, which I'm glad about, but I'd say that was the most stressful thing for me. It was a really big money investment. If it didn't work out, I probably wouldn't be recording videos anymore. So yeah, let's move on to the next question. Next question is, how many people worked on the designs? Love your content, by the way, thank you. Um, for the first collection, it was 100% solely by myself. I didn't have anybody else help with the designs. For the second collection, which is like a big umbrella collection, it's gonna have different releases as um, like the next year goes on. Um, but one of the items is a collab with one of my friends, which I'm very excited about. Um, so I'm just kind of like testing out the waters to see how that works out. Next question, how do you feel knowing that something you created is enjoyed by others? It's a really crazy feeling. Um, like seeing you guys wear my stuff, take pictures in it, and just like wearing it in general is, is crazy, it's mind blowing. Because for the longest time when you're designing and you're just like coming up with ideas and you get really attached to those ideas, you're just so used to seeing them on a screen, like seeing a flat drawing. But then when you actually like see the samples and then see people wearing them, it's, it's crazy. I remember like eight months ago, which was after I sent off the designs and that kind of thing, um, and I was waiting to see like the first photos of like the samples and whatnot. Um, I had received an email with a photo of a part of a prototype, not even a full sample, but just like a prototype, just to see like what, it, they were just testing like what it looks like. Um, and my factory manager was just like so gassed on it. And he sent me the email and then I actually got the chills just cause I was so used to seeing it on the screen and then seeing it in real life and just seeing an image of it blew my mind. Um, so it's a very crazy process. And then I hope it happens to you guys when you start your own brands. When can we expect new products? My goal is to release another couple items, at the very least by the end of the year. I really hope I'm able to stay true to that. Um, six months, even though it does sound like a long time, isn't really a long time in the manufacturing and design and brand running um, world. So I really hope I can release more stuff this year. That's my goal. Next question is, any shirts coming out soon? I am doing a t-shirt, probably a couple t-shirts for the next collection except they're not gonna be like your normal average Joe like t-shirt, they're gonna be really, really nice. I'm very excited to show you guys what they look like and that kind of thing. Um, but yes, there will finally be t-shirts. The last question is, what inspired you to start your brand, meaning of the designs and that kind of thing? I think I mentioned this earlier in the video, but for the most part, I want to make stuff that I wish existed, stuff that I would wear any day of the week. For example, let's say I want to create like the perfect pair of jeans, um, but they're completely tailored to what I like. I'm able to do that with a brand. Um, whereas if I didn't have a brand, I'm kind of just stuck to buying what other people have made. So it's just kind of having a, another creative outlet, having a way to produce something that's tangible and able to wear and be proud of. So that's basically the gist of it. And I think that was the last question. Yeah, that was the last question. So for the next part of the video, it's gonna be me showcasing some of your outfits wearing Colette High, which I'm super happy about. I love seeing you guys wear the stuff like I already mentioned. Um, so yeah, let's just get right into that. Moving right along to the second part of the video. This is just gonna be me showing off some of my favorite outfits of you guys wearing Colette Hyatt. I told you guys to tag me or the brand on Instagram. So I'm just gonna be running through, going over my favorite ones, kind of like breaking down why I like the outfit and that kind of thing. So let's just hop right into it. So first up, we have an outfit from my man, Kyron Warwick or Got Swedish on YouTube and Instagram. He's got a really sick outfit on. He's wearing a short sleeve, crinkled button up shirt. Fits great on him, love the color. He's got a pair of uh, like sea green pants. They might be Dickies, I know he loves his Dickies. And then he's got on the Doc Martens uh, Fragment collab, I think those were. And then he's got the vegan leather side bag. I love all the colors going on. Right up my alley, I would totally wear this outfit. Moving right along, we have an outfit from Randall Gordon. He's got on two pieces from the collection, but I feel like he kind of made it his own. I can't really explain why I feel like he was able to do that, um, but nonetheless, he's got on like a nice brain dead hat. He's got the cathedral sweater with a t-shirt. I think that's a bare knuckles tee layered underneath. Um, then he's got the drawstring tactical trousers. I think he has the straps pulled on them. I could be wrong, but the fit looks great on him. I love the silhouette. And then finally, he's got on a pair of like uh, Converse without any laces in them. I love the colors of the outfit. It's very monochromatic, but the cream of the shoes matches the cream of the sweater. It just ties together nicely. So thank you, Randall. I hope you enjoy the pieces. Next outfit is from Cameron Henry. He's got the Dirt Cathedral hoodie on. Uh, like a canvas tote bag over his shoulder. The Elite's cargo shorts, which I used to own 
and then he's got the uh, clear CDG Nike Dunks. Um, this outfit looks great, very casual. The whole color palette looks nice. It's very muted, right up my alley. I'm gonna be saying that a lot. Um, the next outfit is easily one of my favorite outfit pictures. I don't know why, I just love all the different tones going on. My man Salt Boy has got the Ice Cathedral hoodie on, and then he's got on a pair of white trousers, and then finish off the outfit with the Louis Vuitton low top, uh, I think that's the Chicago exclusive release, the white and gray colorway with the little orange, with a little hint of orange on the bottom. I love this outfit, I love the shoes. I think the hoodie fits them perfectly. The whole color palette is great. So thank you, Salt Boy. I hope you enjoyed the hoodie. Next outfit is from one of my mentors. Very, very instrumental in the process of Kalehaya. He helped me so much. This is an outfit from Jacob Keller. This is at the Maccus pop-up uh, shop of it in Portland a couple weeks ago. He's wearing a vintage Rolling Stones tie-dye shirt, which looks amazing. He's got on a pair of light wash denim with like knee rips and then a raw hem. And then he's got the Elite's loafers on feet, and then he finished off the whole outfit with the vegan leather side bag. I know he loves that bag to death. He wears it almost every single day, he said. He wore it like three days in a row, he told me, which is hilarious. But yeah, I love this outfit. I would wear this outfit easily. I love the contrast between the really rugged, uh, torn up jeans, but then also the really nice shoes. Next outfit is also from Jacob. I'm just knock both of his outfits out of the way, just because they're perfect. He's got on a vintage Metallica t-shirt, the tactical drawstring trousers, and then I think those are Elite's Chelsea boots. The reason why I love this outfit is because of the silhouette. He's got the straps and the pants pulled all the way, so it just creates a really interesting um, shape and they just fit great on him. The boots look so amazing with the pants. I'm very, very jealous I do not have those boots. Um, and then the t-shirt just goes perfect with the pants. I wanted the perfect pair of pants that you could wear anything with, especially just a vintage tee and he pulled it off perfectly. It looks great, Jacob. Moving on to the next outfit. This is from Gutter God. Uh, he's got a really sick picture going on. He's wearing two pieces from the collection. He's got on the ice hoodie and then also the tactical drawstring trousers. And then he finished off the outfit. Very, very simple outfit, but he finished it off with the Rick Owens. I think those are the Rick Owens Adidas runners or maybe there's Rick Owens runners. Um, they have like the really interesting soul shape going on. He's sitting on top of a dumpster that's right in front of a cathedral that looks really similar to the one on the hoodie. So excellent picture, Gutter God. Thank you so much for wearing this stuff. This next outfit is from Tai Sito. I love this outfit so much. He's wearing the cathedral sweater with the Who is Jacob uh, 13 pocket cargos, I think they're called. And then he's got on a pair of like slip-on shoes. I don't know what those are, but those shoes are so sick. Oh, they're undercover, you tagged it. Undercover slip-ons, I love how they look. Um, this whole outfit just ties together perfectly with all the colors and the silhouette is amazing too. So thank you, Ty Sito. This next outfit is from my man, Ramzoid. He's a musician, he's got a lot of followers, verified and all that good stuff. So definitely go follow him. Um, but he's wearing the Dirt Cathedral hoodie and also he's got the side bag in hand. Not across the body, but just in hand. He's got a pair of like acid wash cargo jeans a pair of like harness uh, leather boots, very similar to the YSL ones. I don't know if they are YSL. And he's got on like a wide brimmed like denim bucket hat or something. And he's got the chains on. I just love this outfit. Love the picture too. It just matches, like all the colors match perfectly. The jeans are like the perfect color to match with the brown hoodie. Um, so killed it, Ramzoid. Moving along, we have an outfit from Transcend. And I love this outfit so much. He's got the cathedral sweater on. He's got on the ERD flannel, which is like a four or $5,000 flannel. He's got a pair of Vetmont jeans and then the Julie's boots. This suit is dripping on everybody. This is easily an outfit that I would wear, but I could never afford. It's mind blowing how expensive this outfit is, but it looks amazing too. It doesn't look expensive, but if you know, you know. So thank you, Transcend. I love this outfit so much. Please send me that flannel for free. I really appreciate it, thank you. Next outfit is from VDXNG. This is also an outfit that I would wear easily. He's got on the Dirt Cathedral hoodie, um, CDG tote bag. Those are like patchwork army fatigue pants with like buttons and snaps and pockets all over them. Slightly different green tones going on in the pants. And then I want to say those are the Birch colorway of the Kiko A6, which are really, really nice shoes. I actually just purchased a pair of those a few days ago, which I'm very excited about getting. But I love this outfit. I think the pants could be a little bit longer. However, it just looks great overall. I love all the tones going on. Definitely right up my alley. Next outfit is from my man Alfred. He's got on a black baseball cap, red t-shirt, um, vegan leather side bag, which looks great on him. 
Um, and then he's got on a pair of Craig Green like shorts or like short pants, I'm not really sure what they are. Um, and then finish off the outfit with a pair of old schools. I love this outfit because the old schools match with the tee. But then it's also really experimental with the pants. If you were to imagine this outfit without the side bag, it wouldn't be as good, um, which is why I love that piece so much. You can throw it on almost any outfit, it just kind of improves the outfit. Moving right along, we have an outfit from Sanjeev. Sanj is wearing the running green paisley pants, which look amazing. I love those pants. He's got on the YSL uh, black leather harness boots. He's got a pirate long sleeve shirt on. I'm not really sure what brand that is, but it looks great on him. It's right up his alley. He's got on a Prada bucket hat. And they finish off the whole outfit with the vegan leather side bag strung over his shoulder. Looks great. I love this outfit so much. I could totally see myself wearing something similar to this, but maybe toned down a little bit. Sam's always crazy with the outfits. Crazy to see that man wear my pieces. I'm very excited about that. And I'm gonna stop it there. There's a lot more outfits I wish I could talk about, but this video is already like maybe 30 minutes long. I don't know what it's gonna be like. Um, so thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below. Drop a comment down below if there's any burning questions you wish you could have asked me, but I didn't get around to answering. I'll try to answer as many comments as I can down below. Thank you again for watching. Peace out, you guys. Have a good day. See you next time.